Hello, friends. Welcome to another Starfinder Wednesday. Uh, we've got a treat for you today. I hope you got your permission slips. I hope you packed a lunch because we're going on a tour. We are going to be doing an in-depth tour of Absalom Station with Starfinder Creative Director Robert G. McCreary. I call him Rob, so I keep wanting to stop after the Rob part. But Robert G. McCreary, uh, or Rob G. McSee uh, on Twitter, um, we're going to be doing some talking uh, about different parts and uh, all of that stuff. I've got some images. Some of them, a lot of you probably haven't seen before because we took them from a marketing material that we just ha handed out at uh, conventions and stuff. It's a pretty cool deep dive that we're going to be doing today. Um, also, we're doing a new, a new format for the show. We're going to do a 30-minute show, and then we're going to take a tiny, tiny little break. Uh, and then we're going to come back after that and do Q&A with Twitch uh, with all of you in the chat. Um, so that way, when I upload the videos to YouTube later, all of the Q&A stuff is just not a part of that. And uh, having a little break in between there, it's going to make it easier for me to edit. So uh, if you have questions, awesome. Hang on to them. We're going to get to those uh, after, um, after we do the main part of the show. Um, and beyond that, uh, thank you for joining us, everybody. Um, without further ado, I would like to introduce to you Robert G. McCreary. Creative Director of Starfinder. How are you, pal? Good. I'm doing fine. How are you, Dan? I'm good. I'm good. This is your first time on Starfinder Wednesday. That's correct. Right? Yeah. You were on Path... You were on Paizo Friday. Yeah, early on. Way, way. I think back in the day when I just had two folding chairs. Yeah. <laughs> was that right? I think so, yeah. <laughs> the studio has improved greatly. Yeah, well, it's getting there. Yeah. It's, it is what it is. Um, I think we had two folding chairs. I don't even remember if the curtain was up or not. I don't know. If and we may have had one curtain. We yeah. had a curtain or back something. there. Yeah. Um, and then it was just this rambling uh, devil may care type show that just kind of whatever came out. Indeed. Uh, talk wise just came out. Um, so today, uh, so basically I came to you and said, hey, you're going to be the, and out of all of the shows that we're doing, you're the first person to be a part of this new format that we're going to try where it's 30 minutes and then 30 minutes broken up. And I said, what do you think we should talk about? And I was thinking, you know, we'd pick maybe a, we'd pick a planet or pick a, a um, uh, like a, a group, some kind of nefarious group or something like that. And you said Absalom Station. I was like, that's perfect. Because not only does uh, Dead Sun start there. And yep. for those of you that don't know, uh, Rob has a, has, has a little something to do with uh, Incident at Absalom Station. You wrote that. I did, yeah. Uh, which is why it's so awesome. And uh, what I thought, you know, I thought it'd be perfect because if somebody is, uh, even if they, they've played Starfinder before, uh, it, it, there's not really a, a chance to walk through the halls of, of Absalom Station. There's none of that real uh, chance because you're playing. And I've, you know, uh, if you've listened to Androids and Aliens or any of the other Starfinder podcasts out there, you know, your time in Absalom Station goes pretty quick. It, That's true. You're, you're there. Uh, things happen. No spoilers on this one. There's no spoiler tag, I promise. Things happen, and then you you 23 skidoo out of there, right? <laughs> yeah, I think totally. say that. I think the kids still say that. Um, so uh, I thought it, I think you're right. I think it'd be kind of fun to go through, and I've got lots of images from. Actually, I, I grabbed images uh, from. I think it's called the Conspectus. Yeah, the Starfinder Star Conspectus. Starfinder mm -hmm. Conspectus um, that we were handing out at some conventions and and different uh, venues like that. And there's some really good art on there. Yeah, I was and, pleased with how they turned out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it looks really good. So uh, we're going to go through that. I don't have the conspectus with me. Uh, it's in my office. Yeah, me, me too. <laughs> I, we're so prepared, folks. You're welcome. Uh, but it's a really cool thing. If you see if you see us at uh, a show or something, see if if we have one. They're, they look they look amazing. Uh, and the the whole point of this thing is it centers around Absalom Station, basically. Um, yeah, well, it's kind of the the center of the of the packed worlds and the whole setting. That's mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, we we talk about we kind of view the the galaxy and the whole setting of Starfinder as this sort of like bullseye that gradually you know gets bigger and bigger. And so right at the middle of that is Absalom Station. So it's kind of the center of everything in the game. Okay, I gotcha. Um, and it's just this big. Uh, sp uh, space station. It's a big space station. It's in the orbit where the planet of Galarian used to be. Okay. Uh, as people who've read the Starfinder rulebook know, the planet of Galarian has vanished somewhere, and in its place, in its orbit, is this huge space station, Absalom Station. Okay. And what happened to Absalom? 
Well, we don't know. You know, <laughs> that was on Galarian. There's and clearly Galarian, yes. there's clearly some connections between Absalom Station and the ancient city of of Absalom. Uh -huh. But what actually happened to Absalom and what happened to Galarian is one of the big mysteries of Starfinder. And I'm excited to say that by the end of this 30 minute show, you're going to have the answers to those mysteries. Every single one, <laughs> minus <laughs> a lot. Totally kidding. We're, we're not going to like. Th there's the gap, and uh, there there are those mysteries that are I I think important to maintain. Right. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of uh, narrative, I think, that can come out of that sort of thing, too, you know. So, um, Aramil, how are you? It's good to see you in the chat, buddy. Um, so, uh, let's get it. Let's, so, the first thing that uh, that I want to show is, is the over, like, the above looking down view of Absalom yeah. Station. Um, and so, briefly, what are we kind of looking at here? So, with this top-down view of, of Absalom Station, this is kind of the basis for our map in our Pact Worlds book. But you can kind of see the main structure of Absalom Station here. It's, uh, you know, sort of a an asymmetrical six-pointed star. Uh, the, the arms that stick out are where a lot of the docks are mm -hmm. uh, for this. In the center, you can see the big central eye, uh, which is a, a bubble uh, with parks and skyscrapers inside that. And what you do miss is one of the, the sort of lower levels in this in this picture, but we do have some other ones that, that show some of the, okay. the bigger. And would we be able, and so uh, essentially, uh, is I, I assume there's guns and cannons and things for uh, defense. Yeah, Absalom. Shielding. Yeah, it's got it's the Absalom Station is very well defended. Uh, okay. You mentioned the gap earlier, and of course that's part of the thing. When the gap ended, a bunch of people just found themselves on the space station. So that is one of the mysteries. Oh. Nobody knows who built Absalom Station, where it came from. Um, it does seem to be designed for humans, which make up a large portion of its populace, but even its origins are a mystery. But it is very heavily armed. It's been attacked at numerous times, and uh, and it has been able to repel it with both shields and big mass driver and laser batteries, and it also has thrusters that it can kind of reposition itself. Oh, really? Yeah. Does it self-position back? Yeah, well, I think yeah, we haven't quite gone into the details of how uh, <laughs> how you actually move the station, but it but it can be moved certainly. Everything you say is going to be canon, right? So you got to be careful with what yeah, you say. Yeah, exactly. Okay, all right. Um, and then uh, also, as in terms of protection, uh, I would imagine uh, you have like all of these patrolling ships that fly around. Uh, yeah, Is there's the idea? there's a sort of it's it's almost a sort of unofficial district of Absalom Station. It's called the Armada, and it's this oh. constantly shifting. Uh, group of ships that is in orbit around the station and some are there more permanently some are there as just people come in they don't necessarily want to pay the docking fees or be subject <laughs> right. to all the laws of Absalom Station they'll conduct their business off of sort of offshore of Absalom Station as it were but they do it's kind of an understood thing that if you're in the Armada and the station comes under attack it comes under attack you're part of the defense of the station, you know? So it's not literally a military armada or a military fleet, but a lot of the ships in there kind of view it as their responsibility to help defend the station if they need it. So that's interesting. Is it possible that there would be people in the armada that have never set foot inside this? Is it, do they just live their lives out there? Yeah, like? there, there could be people that for one reason or another don't want to actually go to the station right. or, you know, and. Like I said, there's some people that are there permanently, and there's ships that have been kind of cobbled together and basically become little mini space stations of themselves, and other ships are coming and going all the time. So then with, uh, with the Armada floating around, uh, do we assume that there's nefarious practice? Like, are a lot of them maybe smuggling? And, Almost and, assuredly. Okay. There's, uh, all right. So <laughs> it's, not like, uh, it's not like these uh, vigilant sentinels that are patrolling around doing no. good a lot of them do it for a reason and that's to yeah. stay under the radar there's, or something. there's probably a few do-gooder sentinels around in there but you know <laughs> it, that's also a good place to it, it, it both it provides a place where they can do it without apps where people can engage in those sorts of deals without Absalom Station authorities looking over them. And it also lets Absalom Station say, you know what, we're going to lead these people a little bit out to the edge so that they don't interfere with the rest of the populace. Okay. All right. I get that. Um, and then moving in. So if we look at uh, going back to the map, uh, let's actually go to the uh, to that view where we're kind of looking at it from the back at, or from the outside and seeing yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, you can see uh, the eye, which is the uh, pop bubble 
yes. idea that's in, in the middle there. And that, that's, a, I assume, like a biodome, like a, mm -hmm. a life-sustaining dome that gives them a nice view of space and, and everything like that. And then yeah. moving down towards the uh, bottom of there is the spike. Right. Is, is that at the bottom? The spike is at the very bottom, okay. yeah. That's where a lot of the machinery that runs the station is, and it's also where the sort of poorest and most downtrodden residents of the station kind of gradually trickle down into the slums of the spike. Okay, all right. So if we're taking a tour, uh, where would you like to be, where do you think the best part to begin if we're gonna take a little swing by of the of Absalom Station? Well, most ships would dock on one of the arms of the of the of the station. Okay. Um, that's where there and there's plenty of places. Oh, I, um, I I forgot to put the docking bay on there. Well, yeah, every, we know what docking bays look like, and it's so amazing. It's that's a where gorgeous photo. that's where most people go. There's all sorts of different sorts of docking bays or docking clamps, and mm -hmm. all sorts of uh, services and shops and businesses, you know, catering to those people. And it might be that people visiting station never leave the docks at all uh, right. because there's so much to do there, but. Sort of, we we talk about how the money and influence flows from the docks inward toward the eye, because okay. all of the money and power is concentrated in the eye, but all of the money and taxes come in through the docks, through uh, through trade. I gotcha. Um, okay. So the eye is this, like you said, the big popomatic bubble. Um, it's got a lot of skyscrapers and government buildings and this big park in the middle, lots of greenery, where um, called Jatembe Park. Uh, it's which like is a, a Central Park, I guess, would be the idea. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And there, there's a few things that for people that are familiar with Pathfinder and specifically the city of Absalom, there's a number of Easter eggs um, or sort of pickups from from Ab that went from Absalom and Pathfinder to Absalom Station and Starfinder. Oh, right. So, okay. for instance, people might recognize the name Jatembe in Jatembe Park, which is a reference to Old Mage Jatembe, which is one of the most powerful wizards in Galarian's history. So, at least some part of Old Mage Jatembe has survived to the future where there's a big park named after him on Absalom Station. And it's a beautiful park. It is a beautiful really park. Is. And it's kind of open to everybody. And, of course, it's surrounded by all these big buildings that are owned by the most powerful corporations in the packed worlds. And right. The private security forces that sort of stuff so then you bring up a you bring up a question that I have now because anytime there's Easter eggs that's when I really like to get involved in things because that's that kind of thing is really fascinating to me um, would you say that it is just a pure Easter egg or is there are do you guys as as the Starfinder <coughs> team are you purposely like flirting with the idea that maybe these names have hung on for an unknown amount of time and they've become part of the lore or is it do you look at it like, now we're just kind of having fun and trying to pay homage? It's kind of both, actually. Okay. I mean, in some like in the case of Jatembe Park, there's a, we don't certain, we don't have any sort of history about why the park is named that. That's right. sort of a pickup. But one of the other things, another location on Absalom Station is the Arcana Miriam. In Pathfinder and Absalom, uh, there was there was a, uh, a magical university called the Arcana Miriam that trained wizards. Now there's the same thing on Absalom Station that trains uh, technomancers. Now, oh. and we even, we, we even say, you know, in, in, in the stories and stuff, is this literally a direct thing? No one knows, that's because of the gap, but yeah. it's certainly both thematically, you know, people that know Absalom recognize that name and that's now training the best magic people in Starfinder. Okay. Are training in the Arcan Arcana Miriam, yeah. All right, so moving away from the giant pop bubble uh, the eye, as it's known, uh, mm -hmm. with the Tembe Park. Uh, Let's stay there for just one second, I'm though, not going because anywhere. the uh, government is there too. So oh. the Planara is the sort of big building where the uh, where the Pact Council meets. So this okay. is all of the Pact worlds, all the worlds in the solar system that are members of the Absalom Pact. That's sort of our founding government, they all send representatives to the Planara, to the Pact Council. And so this is where they kind of decide, it's kind of like United Nations, where they where they decide oh, gotcha. all the political and alliances and things um, for the Pact World. So that's also there, right there in the middle, in the eye, is sort of the center of the Pact World's government. And that's another thing that makes Absalom Station sort of the center of everything. Yeah, now if there has to, now this kind of brings up the part that you're talking about, the, you know, the United Nations idea uh, in Absalom Station. Uh, do they have a government of sorts? Like, because there's the Pact Worlds. Sure. And so they're all a part of the, the Pact. Yeah. Uh, and that, that, that sort of thing. Um, does, and I imagine that the, the ruling part of that whole thing comes out of the Planara. Is that yeah. what I call it right? Planara? Yeah. Okay. Uh, close it up. That's the building where they meet. The building, is the yes. Planara. The, yeah. yeah. Um, does, does Absalom Station have its own 
type of I Def assume they have military and all that sort of thing. Yeah, they have less of the military because of the Armada and some of the Pact Worlds, things like the Stewards, but uh, it, Absalom Station does have its own government. Its okay. leader is called the Prime Executive or the Primex, and uh, the current Primex is Kumara Melacruz. Um, okay. She's recently elected. Um, there, there's also a council called the Syndic Guild that the various neighborhoods of the station elect representatives to. Okay. And then, and so the Primex works with the Syndic Guild. The the current Primex, Kumara Melacruz, is relatively new to her job, and uh, but she's already been cracking down on white collar crime and. And she's actually had one assassination attempt against her. So what? it's uh, yeah. The, so maybe maybe she's a little bit too popular, or maybe she's a little bit too anti-corporate. It's not quite she's too effective. Yeah, perhaps. Right. Perhaps. Uh, okay. Um, and then that's an elected leader. Yes. Okay. Yeah. They have term limits and, and that sort of oh, thing. Oh, so it's very mm -hmm. democratic. Yeah. All although right. although like with the Syndic Guild, some of the neighborhoods are a little bit more, you know, they kind of have like dynasties or criminal gangs might run a particular neighborhood and they just put one of their people on the council. Uh -huh. So it's mostly democratic, I right. say. But then that's that's what she's there to try to clean up is yeah. she's not going to allow that anymore. She's trying not to get all. rid of that. Yeah. All right. Um and then uh because again, there's no spoiler tag on this, so I'm trying to like make sure that we don't say anything too much. But th is this character in Dead Sons? Uh, do they appear, or is that not really? No, other, okay. I mean, she's right. mentioned in, in the Gazetteer, but she's ah, a bit gotcha. higher. You know, that's uh, Dead Sons. You start off at first level on Absalom Station. She's got a bit more things to do than deal with first level adventurers. Okay, so, all right. The whole station. Uh, that makes sense. So uh, let's see. Uh, we're moving through the eye still. Yeah, and then uh, we've talked about. Uh, the, the seat of government, as mm -hmm. it were, uh, the park. Sort of in the eye and in the section around it, which is called the ring, there's a number mm -hmm. of uh, big locations too. Uh, one of the main ones would be the Lorespire Complex, okay. which is the headquarters of the Starfinder Society. Um, ah, yeah. This is again another one of those sort of obvious homages. There's the Pathfinder Society, and now we have the Starfinder Society, obviously. and along with Starfinder Society organized play of course that's where they're all that's where they're headquartered is right there on Absalom station okay um, and then uh, behind is it uh, the Starfinder so I'm trying to pick apart the image that we're looking at right now it's uh, the Starfinder Society's in the foreground right there well they kind of right? it's kind of a whole big campus of buildings so yeah. the big twisty spire is the actual lore spire okay um, that's why it's called the lore spire complex gotcha. but we say it's kind of more like a, a university campus of various ah. buildings around where Starfinders can meet with people and and do that kind of stuff okay um, besides things like that um, you know there's the uh, the bastion uh, is a place I, I think I believe you mentioned the stewards which are kind of the Sort of security force of the Pact Worlds. Mm -hmm. uh, they have their their basically headquarters, which is a very fortress-like building called the Bastion, right. because their loyalty is to the Pact Worlds themselves, not any um, addition, not, not any specific government or something. So, should the oh. Pact Council or Absalom Station turn against the Pact Worlds, um, their headquarters is built as a fortress that they can defend and everything, because they kind of serve a higher a higher calling. Okay, and then uh, and all of that sort of relates back to still kind of being the seat of government. And I assume yeah. uh, are there uh, like uh, embassies set up, like uh, or does it all just go into there? Yeah, there are definitely embassies because this is where you know with the Pact Council, this is where all of the member worlds send their send their delegations. In Incident at Absalom Station, the first Dead Sons adventure, you actually meet. An ambassador from Eox, the planet of the right. undead, who has a job for the PCs, and uh, <laughs> right. you know, which usually, and I think a lot of people aren't used to taking getting their quests from undead ambassadors, but that's that's what happens. Yeah, I, in that one, I do like the idea with Starfinder. Uh, <clears throat> that's kind of fun. Is uh, there's a lot of you know different types of uh, creatures around, but a lot of those different types of creatures are a part of the Pact world. And so yeah. they're not outsiders. They are they're they're not what you would expect, but they are just as welcome everywhere. And I, I really like that idea. I, I just think that uh, the right when I first started working at Paizo a long time ago, before Starfinder came out, uh, and that wasn't a long time ago, but uh, before Starfinder came out, there was that idea of like the uh, cantina. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like oh the cantina idea, and and uh, I had a really hard time thinking that that was actually going to work. You know, because honestly, it's an RPG. How many uh, playable characters can you have and blah, blah, blah. 
but I think that the 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 flavor and the and like uh, the setup of the stories that I've been playing so far in Starfighter are really good at doing that. Um, so it makes it a lot of fun. It kind of makes it a um, a, a, a melting pot, uh, yeah. as, as it were. And so ideas like that fit in perfectly with things like Absalom Station because it's like I can totally get that now. You know? Yeah, and it, it totally is. But it's also interesting because you can kind of play the opposite side of that as well because with Galarian gone. Absalom Station is kind of home to the the former races that lived on Galarian, including humans. Like that's in the Pact worlds, Absalom Station has kind of become the human homeworld, and so there are elements the like the strong Absalom movement that are um, on Absalom Station that are like humans only. We don't want everybody else's foreigners <laughs> and everything, right. and you know, and so you can kind of play. But whereas it really is a melting pot because you've got people coming from all over that reminds me actually of kind of one of the key points of Absalom Station that we haven't talked about, mm -hmm. which is the Star Stone at the middle, in the middle of the station. Right. So um, I don't think we have any art of the Star Stone, but this is again another thing that comes off of, uh, comes out of Pathfinder. Um, and people that know Pathfinder know that in the city of Absalom, there is the Star Stone. And if you pass the test of the Star Stone, you become a god. Right. Um, yeah. So the Star Stone is the reactor in the middle of Absalom Station. And one of the things that acts is a super powerful drift beacon, mm -hmm. uh, so that ships coming from anywhere in the galaxy can get to Absalom Station very fast by focusing on that on that beacon. Um, so that brings a lot of trade and alien species and stuff there. But it also powers the station, and of course, although it's completely sealed off and it's very difficult to get to, there is still the thing. Well. If you can get to it, you can become a god, and uh, that's one of the things. That, that's still an active feature. Well, it's the old legends say that, and in okay. fact, um, right. Iomade uh, is one of the gods of Starfinder, also a god from Pathfinder. Mm -hmm. um, she's got her big cathedral on Absalom Station, the, the sword like cathedral. Um, Iomade was a mortal human on Galarian who took the test of the Star Stone and became a god. Now in Starfinder, she's the uh, sort of patron goddess of humanity. So okay. people people know that here is somebody who became a god by touching the star stone yeah. thousands, untold thousands of years ago. Nobody knows exactly when because of the gap. So it's, it, it is certainly still could be a possibility and certainly in people's own stories they can add in their own new tests of the star stone on Absalom Station. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and did I put the right one up for that? Was that yes. the Sword Lake Cathedral? Okay, good. Yes, you did. I was, I was scrambling. I was trying to find the... Uh, um, uh, the buttons, but it took me forever because uh, I was actually really lost in the story. I think it's so yeah. fascinating. Um, all right, well, where do you want to go next? So we've got uh, the Bastion. We've got that stuff covered. Uh, what is next on our little tour? I think Absolute we got we, we kind of went out for the arms, but if we go back out on the arms for a second, uh, there's the place called the Cosmonastery of the Empty Orbit. Mm -hmm. um, this is a cool... A cool place. Um, you know, Salarians are one of the the classes in Starfinder, which are all about they they follow the cycle and it deals with the, sort of the life cycle of stars between gravity and light. And it was brought uh, brought to the pack worlds by the Kasathas, the the four armed race that you can play. And so this the Cosmonastery of the Empty Orbit is sort of the premier training ground for Salarians on Absalom Station. It was founded by uh, one of these Kasathas and. This is out on one of the arms of Absalom Station where they can see the space, see space around them, and it's got this weird alien architecture. And uh, I don't know, it's just a cool little, yeah. cool little place to go where you can l learn about these sort of mystical Kasathan traditions. Um, and then uh, moving on from that, we've got, um, I've got, oh, uh, I, w I wanna talk about two things. Okay. There's, there's two things that I'm really fascinated by. Um, I like, uh, we mentioned it before, um, uh, the, the spike. Yeah. The spike. The spike. And mm -hmm. then uh, gas, Fogtown. Fogtown, Fog right. Town. Those are two things that I want to make sure that we have enough time to talk about. And we are getting close to the end of this show, uh, this part of the show. Uh, you Twitch people, hang around. We're, we're going to do some Q&A after this. Um, so uh, which one would you like to... To chat about first. Let's talk about Fogtown Let's because Fogtown. there's yeah. Fog Fogtown. Fog most up. of most of the station is built for humans or seems to have been built for humans, but of course we have lots of alien races, and so there's many different sections of the station that are have been sort of retrofitted or designed to, to fit the other races. So Fogtown uh, is a is where the the Brethidans live. That's one of the they live on a gas giant, so they have a different atmosphere, and so this is a whole place where, that is done with their atmosphere 
filled with their atmosphere that they can fly through. Other people have to put on breathing masks to go and talk to them, but mm -hmm. they're big like biotech researchers, so people want to make deals with them. Um, there's also a district called Puddles, which is a whole flooded thing, <laughs> and they have these little sort of air-filled habit trails that go through there, so if you're oh, somebody nice. who can't breathe water, you can walk through these glass tunnels and swimmy aliens are I don't have, I don't are have an image by. No, we don't have an image of that. That's just another oh, example of this sort of, we haven't, we haven't done Art of Puddles yet. Um, okay. Also, right. Puddles being a district in the old city of Absalon and Pathfinder, too. So oh, you're right. a little connection. Yeah. Oh, that is interesting. All right. Um, so then uh, I assume that uh, the way that Absalom work, Absalom Station works is you have to have these kind of um, uh, atmosphere controlled areas just to make sure that everybody's got a place to go and yeah. all of that sort of thing. Is there um, is there like a, a way for the Brethidens to wander around? Do they have like... They could get Tanks? like breath in spacesuits. Yeah, everybody. Okay. Spacesuits are available for everybody, or your armor functions. They'd be weird, but yeah. everything. It, it, lots of things are weird when you're an alien. Well, and that's true. That's true. Yeah. And and space is different for every creature. That's true. So yeah, I like that. Um, and then we're gonna cap things off on this amazing tour, uh, with the spike. With the spike. I tried yeah. to find the most uh the most expressive image of the spike that I can find, and I feel like uh. I think that nails it right there. And then yeah, we've got this poor unfortunate guy. This is uh, where this is where all the unfortunate people kind of trickle down. These are the bad <laughs> neighborhoods of of Absalom Station. A lot of gangs control them. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of petty crime. Um, this is also where like all the machinery that runs the station is. And because of the gap, this big period, there's also levels that are just completely abandoned. They're called the ghost levels. And there's oh. monsters down there. Nobody really knows what's in those things, <laughs> right. but occasionally groups go down there, fight some alien monsters, and come back with treasures. And so they're still kind of it's like an, an adventure location within or several adventure locations within the whole station itself right right um so uh i i think that that kind of covers the the major stuff yeah um that was everything that we had planned to talk about um so uh on that note i think what we'll do is uh i'm gonna say thank you so much for joining us today on starfinder wednesday uh if you're watching this on youtube uh, I'm glad you watched it. Thank you. Uh, consider uh, subscribing and hitting that bell. Uh, and you'll get notified whenever we put these videos up, which is uh, every Friday. Spoilers. Um, uh, and we're going to take we're going to be done here with this, but we're actually going to keep going on Twitch uh, to do Q&A. If you would like to join us for Q&A, uh, join us on Twitch at 4 p.m. Pacific every Wednesday. Uh, after this show, we do Q&A with everybody in the chat. So thank you so much for joining us, and we we're going to see you next time. See ya!